Hi everyone, welcome back, welcome to my YouTube channel and here I am Tarun Sarma and we are talking about Nest.js advanced course and this is the module 1 and that module name is building the dynamic Nest.js modules. Okay, I will uh, I will not directly jump into this particular topic building dynamic modules otherwise people will get confused okay what I, I have started talking about. First I will try to uh, baseline okay what are the Nest.js core concepts, the building blocks and we'll talk about couple of concepts like dependency injection frameworks and all and then at last we will start talking about how to build your own Nest.js module by just writing some classes and all and configurable a dynamic Nest.js module how you can build. So that is our objective but before that what we need to do? We need to baseline couple of things, baseline the repository we need to we see what all different things we are going to use and what all topics we can cover before even reaching to that particular point because that is required so that we can progress uh, video by video so the important aspect of all these uh, nestjs advanced concept is if you are watching this series you are already comfortable in under understanding nestjs concepts like the common concept uh, nestjs building blocks how you write rest apis maybe somewhat graphql apis how we are using the external modules in the nestjs the dependency injection framework and all for the for the first module i will uh, do a quick recap on these uh, concepts and will create a couple of videos so you will get uh, familiarity on these concepts and once you have it uh, you can follow this series uh, properly. I will share a GitHub repository, okay? And we will be talking. We will be talking and working with that GitHub repository branches. So what we need to talk about is first is the core concepts. So core concepts of uh, Nest.js that contains okay building blocks, and I'm not going to consume most of i'm not going to consume the time uh, here because these are like the basic fundamentals if you are already familiar with the nest.js you can skip these topics and second thing is okay baseline stuff because we are going to uh, play with this repository right so what we are going to do is i am already in love with pnpm with nx so we will use this monorepo for all the nest.js repositories nest.js examples all the demos we are going to use this uh, pnpm with uh, nx and we will just keep creating a workspace uh, folder inside a workspace we will keep creating a, a project which talks about nest.js for that particular topic so it's easy to follow up right and uh, because we are going to use pnpm with nx so we'll just baseline it and then i will just share it on the github so that is what we are going to do third thing is uh, if we talk about the building blocks right so what we are going to do we are going to build a simple rest apis first of all and the rest apis covers all the the basic building blocks there we will cover okay the exception filters controllers services pipes interceptors filters and whatever the common concepts like you see the dependency injections how we are creating services how we are uh, importing the modules because if you are familiar with the angular world like angular framework that also uses the same um, stuff because this nest.js is inspired by the angular framework only and now people started using it more and more because of the modular approach you are creating modules you are sharing the dependencies I mean, you, it it give it is giving you the platform to write a clean code, clean modules. Because what I like in Angular is the clean module separations. I mean, I do more React, but when I talk, when I see the Angular code, it's very easy for me to understand. Okay, where is what? But when I see any other framework, okay, no, it's not that easy, because it's a modular. It, they, they are using these same modular approach, and this Nest.js framework is also inspired by this angular design 
we are creating a module services serv injecting services inside a component in angular here injecting services inside our controllers controllers are nothing but the the router which are exposing your rest interface your graphql interface or anything whatever you are working on so this is the thing which we are going to work on so rest api and then we are going to understand okay what are the modules okay how we are defining services and then dependency injection framework in what all different ways we can create uh, the provider right because either you can create an injectable class or i can just cry create a simple plain class and then i can just use uh, i can add a uh, i can define the use class use factory inside our uh, main modules right there are many ways in which uh, you can create a injectable class not just by using an injectable annotation okay that is important part here and then we will see okay how we are using the existing modules like type rm so type type rm dot uh, for root and for root async these are some of the the common modules we are using like nest js config i will just talk about that so we are using nest js type rm we are using nest js config and there are some uh, existing modules which we use in our application we will see how those module code look like because what what we are doing somebody wrote those packages those are like nest js configurable modules and we are just using them how in our main modules we are saying type rm module dot for root for root async nest js config module dot for root or for root async something like that so we will try to understand this thing first so that we can write our own module which which says okay my logger module and you can do in your code my logger module dot for root or for root async if you want to do a sync initialization of your module right so before that we need to go through all these path and here we are going to use a pnpm with annex so we are going to baseline our workspace create a simple uh, nest js project and then we'll keep extending it so i will be creating a separate separate workspace folder in the repository so it's easy to just uh, walk onto the code and understand okay so let's get started with this i will start with baselining the code and creating our first project okay so first of all let's baseline our repository and for that what we are doing is we are going to have a pnpm and annex so this is my repository that you can also check at github that's like empty repository right now and then i will push my code here nest just advanced 2023 and this is the module one okay this is the repository you can just check out once i post the code and why I'm going to use this NX and the PNPM because we are going to have multiple examples, multiple folders. So it's better that uh, we, instead of creating a separate, separate uh, uh, Nest.js project, I just put those Nest.js projects inside a workspace. And I can also take the advantage of uh, using the packages. So for database config loggers, I can just create a package and then I can use those packages in the application so to understand this what i'm doing right now is i just want to have a simple workspace first of all this is nx nx is a monorepo tool this is like a monorepo uh, setup we are going to build so we are going to use pnpm workspace those people who already following my content for the full stack applications in my last all set of videos i'm working on the pnpm workspace plus nx monorepo those who are new to this just explore this term it's not uh, some rocket science you can easily understand it this is the pnpm workspace and we will add nx uh, monorepo tool on top of that so what we are going to do here is we are going to just set up uh, monorepo first of all and pnpm workspace so for that we are going to create a pnpm workspace dot yml pnpm workspace and inside this what we will say okay i'm going to create a workspace for all these folders 
at least for packages and applications so we will create a app folder apps and packages okay so inside apps we can create n number of our nest.js applications and here we can create our package.json so for that i can just do pnpm in it that would give me a simple package.json structure i will just say it as a this is my scope next is advanced 2023 okay now why we are using workspace workspace means we can have uh, local dependencies linked to each other so what is the advantage of using the pnpm workspace i will just talk about a little bit on that so what is a workspace concept workspace concept exists on the npm pnpm yarn once you want to when you want to have multiple folders multiple services multiple repositories working together and they have the interrelationship also then it's better to create a workspaces so this is how we create pmpm workspace.yml and then inside the packages components you can create your multi multiple components multiple packages and you can link those packages into one another without even publishing them to the remote repository like remote npmjs.com or remote gitlab repository or github repository All right so this is how you create your workspace and workspace mainly we create so that we can have all the code in a one single repository we can reference all of that from there and we can have any kind of technology it can have the applications belongs to the react angular nest.js express uh, swell js swell kit any kind of technology it can have so what we are going to do is we are going to create some global configurations for the all the projects so global configurations contains eslint uh, git ignore pretty rc commit lint just config all those i'm going to add so i mean i don't need to explain what these are eslint pretty rc commit lint config to enforce the commit conventions and husky husky is to enable the git commit hooks and i'm just copying these from my existing mo uh, mono repo which i have built for building these full stack full stack clone applications i have built like three four full stack clone playlist i'm just copying it from there and then we also need to have all the dependencies in my package json my package json looks simple let's make it a little complex and we will understand it so this is root here what all dependencies we are using eslint right just to enforce the eslint conventions and commit gen for the commit conventions typescript for the eslint and here you can see prettier jest uh, eslint nothing much these dependencies are not talking about express nest js koa happy or anything these are global dependencies which most of every project needs right and then we have a typescript global so i will do is a pnpm install currently we don't have any applications or packages added here i also have this nx nx uh, if you are totally new to this i would recommend that you explore nx nx is a smart extensible build system and here this is how you can add mono repo so here we are using the package based mono repo we already have a npm pnpm workspace so here this is how we are creating the the workspace like npm pnpm and then you just create uh, you just add the nx tooling on top of that so we are creating nx json right so what we need to do is i do have this now we have nx tool already there so i need to add nx json there for some of the people you might feel okay i'm just doing copy paste and just use it using these things but there is nothing to talk about right these are totally separate topics if you really want to understand there is already a playlist which talks about nx mono repo like package based mono repo and there are two type of uh, uh, nx mono repos you can create package based and standalone okay so we are using package based mono repo structure installation here this is how we are creating the workspace so package based monorepo works uh, on top of the the workspace which we have already created 
and here we just added the annexation tool and you can see now i can i will switch my workspace to this one select workspace to okay this one and i can see currently we don't have any applications created okay so till now this is not part of any setup we are just creating a backbone of our system that we are going to use this pnpm workspace and here inside these apps we can create our different applications nestjs for elastic search integration nestjs for showing the dynamic module uh, creations nestjs for doing integration with all different uh, third party services all these applications we are going to create here packages we can put here all the reusable packages so it's like a bare bone simple setup for moving forward now in the applications what i can do i can spin up create a i can create a nest cli application right so i will just take a look what is the command and i will create a simple application there nest new so i will go to apps here i will just do nest new and i will simply say is i will put the numbers on all these folders so they may be in the order of the videos so nest js baseline and we can also talk about rest apis okay okay didn't found any nest js uh, global dependency npm install minus z i think it's nest cli and it may be because i have switched my node version and then we will create this uh, project uh, that is strange okay we are installing nest js cli earlier i typed maybe the wrong package that's why i didn't install the nest command okay now i can simply do application and i go i'm going to use pnpm for this and i can see some magic happening inside applications i can see package json created with all these different projects and i will just add a work i add a namespace here and at the root what i will do is i will go to the root of this and i will just do pnpm install so you can see the node modules here and for each and every application also you will see the node modules actually this pnpm workspace create a sim link so if any package which you are using from the parent then it will uh, sim link with that dependency you can see this prettier these are you can see the sim links right all these sim links has been generated okay now if you look into the code of this baseline simple application which we have created i mean that is good enough to talk about okay what are the building blocks and all we created a services controllers a spec file inside test we have a unit test and end to end test okay and we can see here this nx console that is ready to start our application like npm run start dev this nx console is a plugin you can install this plugin because we are using nx monorepo you can just enable once you enable this uh, plugin you will start seeing all your projects all your applications and packages coming up here that you can please that you can just uh, run any of these command and you can run the start command on all the applications build command on all the applications so this is the bare bone applications running okay so this is our simple setup which we have done and now we are adding these different applications right if you see i think this is using nest js 9.x core common platform express and then nest js cli 9.0 let me zoom this little bit we can see that we can just read these dependencies and try to understand so you can see type uh, this config prettier and all these dependencies are coming because these are already a part of the root module system 
so if you look into the non modules these are already being pointed to the root we haven't like installed them here they are already added in the part of our global dependencies type script and all the we have created a sim link for it here you can see in the node modules all these dependencies are inside the global root and here we are adding these uh, node modules to each and every project so in the package based monorepo uh, you will always have a node modules for each and every projects you are creating so let's say first demo we are talking about simple building blocks of nest.js and how we are building a simple rest api right so i will open it i will go to the source here i can see the main.ts which is starting the application service module which is a root module here we define all the controllers services here we import any additional module if that this module has a dependency controller which is creating our apis this is a spec file and then here you can see nest cli our default cli which is running our application ts config and ts config build so when you are doing npm run build it is using ts config build command build file and this is just a scripts you can see start format all the basic things okay so here we can do lots of things npm run start dev npm run build so it will build this particular project and you can see what command it is executing pnpm execute nx build on to this particular project right so it has executed the build command so coming back to this concept of workspace and the packages here we are using pnpm workspace so what we will do we will create these simple simple nest.js demo applications inside the this workspace application directory and we already have a nest cli we can spin up n number of application all these applications will be show, showcasing some or the other concept of no nest cs and here these are the applications and similarly we can have some packages there which we can use across different folders like database package logger package and all these are all our packages and they have their own dependencies each and every folder will have its own package json and whenever you do pnpm install what it will do is it is going to install the dependencies on each and every package or each and every application let's say these are the packages and these are your different applications which is showcasing different concepts of nest.js you will see node modules available in each and every package the only difference here is we are using package based monorepo so all the global common dependencies will have a sim link to these uh, lower level packages lower level projects right because there is a root package json dependencies and root node modules and if there is something common dependencies then it is not going to it is going to create a sim link for that dependencies okay so this is how this monorepo stuff works if you want to read more about it first uh, go through the workspaces what is pnpm workspace and then what is nx monorepo tool i will add a just a simple playlist link which contains uh, four five to six videos but that really nice if you want to enhance your knowledge and why 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 we need it let's say because we mostly write full stack applications and a project which contains front end back end some libraries storybook and all so what we tend to do we create a different different repositories instead of that we can just use these workspaces in which you can create a multiple folders they can act as a different different projects and you can even link those packages into one another let's say react component library i wanted to import a component into react project so i will just create a separate package and react as an application and i can link my packages into the application without even publishing that package of uh, bootstrap modules of, of package of storybook into the remote dependency so there are many advantages of uh, having it like single repository containing everything and there are pros and cons for each and everything but this is the way forward and this is simple baseline configurations are we don't need to write them manually i just copied from my existing project and here we have the packages so we can add the packages and we here we have created our first cli application which contains a bare bone controller services and uh, 
I mean, this is not even part of advanced topic. What are the building blocks of Nest CS? If you look into some of uh, the documentation here, fundamentals. Here we are going to talk about uh, all these concepts. First of all, let's say what are the simple building blocks overview. We create a controllers to write a REST APIs. Then we write a providers which can be injected into our uh, controllers and providers can be injected into one another. The modules modules is a root entity like we have app module which contains the uh, controller services and all the things middleware if you wanted to pre-process or pre uh, validate a request or pre-process something before the request hits the route you can create a middleware middleman exception filters if you wanted to treat the exceptions differently returned by controllers from the apis we can write exception filters similarly the pipes to transform the data like we are using validation pipes to transform and validate the request payload guards to protect your api routes let's say i just want to access this particular api only for a particular role you can create a role guard and if i want okay this guard this api route should be accessible only by logged in user who has the token then we can create a auth guard which takes the which checks the authorization header is available and valid token or not interceptors we can create interceptors to intercept the request and the response i mean uh, we generally create it for the logging the request time response time and i remember one use case which talks only about okay like like logging interceptor and uh, some data transformation it is doing and then custom decorators you can create a custom decorators or you can use these existing decorators like params, body, request, response, session. So these decorators are already defined and you can also create your own decorator. Okay. Like here, you can see I created this custom user decorator and what this at the rate user means, it is trying to give you the object which is attached, which is already there inside a request object, request.user. So you don't need to write request.user here you are already getting the user object coming from request.user because I have created a custom decorator for this create a param decorator it is taking data and execution context and that's it so these are like the, the basic fundamentals what we will do is we will create a simple application to play around uh, the concept of modules how the modules dependent on one or another how we are writing controllers how we are writing a simple modular structure so here inside source you can have an app like how the folder structure look like inside app you can have a domain and inside domain you will start creating your folders like users okay then you have courses and then let's say you have user courses comments and then you will add the controllers DTOs services modules and all each and every domain will have these four to five things you will create a controller because an api routes what api routes needs api route need a controller like i will just create a simple controller it would need a dto we are talking about uh, advanced nest js so i'm not going to explain what is dto dto is a for payload validation you create a custom types which is used by validation pipe uh, here we are creating controller DTO services comment dot service dot ps and comment dot main module comment dot module dot ts you can also create response DTO comment dot response dot DTO dot ts okay and then there may be a possibility that you want to write a DAO service for it comment dot DAO data access object I mean let's say you are writing a, another service class which only deals with uh, fetching transforming uh, or writing queries uh, which talks to the database DAO service dot TS I think mostly I have written these many things if you want to have some interfaces you can create interfaces or types inside types folder you can have index.ts and types index.ts and you can also create one 
test folders so uh, how the how you write tests tests you need to write a, okay you need test so there is a controller you will create a spec.ts file for it controller dot spec.ts okay for services same thing you will create a spec.ts so we don't need to overburden this folder at least these kind of files are good enough here we are writing unit test for controller and unit test for services you can see some default uh, spec already there right app controller dot spec dot ts so with the controller and with the services you can write their uh, tests so this is what we will do here and whatever the modules which are common like src app domain here inside domain we are creating all the things which are specific to an entity here we can have shared all the shared things shared services will go here and i will say one is the core core means if you want to create interceptors filters pipe middleware all those things will go inside a core because they those are core part of nest js and they are actually shared among all the the projects and then shared core domain what else you can do here you can actually create a modules also let's say currently we are going to use these packages folder of this monorepo but if you are not using that then what you what else you can do you can create a database module you can create a config module you can create a logger module and these can be a standard global modules which are available at the app level right because they exist at the app level and whatever we are writing that they exist at the domain level so this is the folder structure you can adopt shared modules all the at, at, these folders will have a module module.ts inside these folders logger module domain module here we will have a root domain module here so all these domain modules comment courses user module will be exported through domain module and will be added in the app module so here what we will do is we will import domain module something like this right so this is somewhat about okay how we are adding the the folder structures and all the external integrations you can put an external folder or storage folder or something like that which you can use even if you are writing migrations i will create a migration folder also here database migrations okay now this is your uh, overall folder structure which you can extend now inside domain you will start creating controllers services custom providers and this is the main module right and all the common things let's say i'm doing authentication that is common to every controller and service here i'm going to create a guards right strategy guard strategy what else i can just do i can create a middleware also auth middleware service auth service these are part of the auth module because they are dealing with authentication and inside shared module what you can do is you can create all the things which are shared across the whole the project shared right what you can create here is your middleware shared middleware okay you can create uh, interceptors interceptors filters pipes okay uh, validation pipe interceptor filters what else we can add here if we look into this middleware filters module controller okay these are like some of the things which you can add inside this shared module and then you create a shared module.ts import all the services here and similarly you create your core module.ts here where you are putting all the core stuff okay and then import all of these inside a app module here you will import a core module shared module domain module database module config module logger module or you import all of these inside a domain module because domain contains the root 
here we can just pass only the one module which has everything all about the application inside it okay so this is like a bare bone folder structure and a sample code we can get started with